Welcome back everybody and today's video is about limits and especially L'Hopital's rule. When do we use L'Hopital's rule? What conditions can we use it under? Uh, you will find this in the AP Calculus Unit 4 and also Topic 5 IB HL uh, Differential Calculus. So we're going to dive in and have a look at when we can use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so there's certain conditions only that we can use L'Hopital's. That is when we are using a, a limit that is like a fraction, and basically if f of x, the numerator, tends to zero, or g of x tends to zero, as x tends to a, then you will have what's type zero over zero. So this is an issue because we cannot divide zero by zero, it's an indeterminate form. We will also have another uh, scenario where if we have f of x over g of x, then substituting in uh, a, or as x tends to a, f of x could tend to plus or minus infinity. So could the denominator. Therefore, you would have this type where you have uh, infinity over infinity, or it could be negative infinity over negative infinity. Uh, that way, we could use L'Hopital's rule. Third and final one would be, if you have the product of two uh, functions, if one of them tends to zero and the other one tends to plus or minus infinity, then we've got this scenario where we have zero times infinity. Therefore, we can use L'Hopital's rule. There are two just main conditions, really, that if, the, if f of x and g of x are differentiable, then therefore then the limit of f of x over g of x, it will be the same as the derivative of f over the derivative of g, as x still tends to the same value. Okay, that might sound a little bit confusing, so let's go through some examples. Okay, so I've got a series of examples that we're going to go through. They are going to get progressively more difficult. The first ones we're going to substitute infinity in, but as that value a, as x tends to a, it doesn't have to be infinity. It can just be another value, like zero or just a, a numerical value. So uh, in the question two, I'll be substituting zero in or, or infinity. And in question three, this is quite a tricky one. We're going to tend to zero, but this little plus means we're going to tend to zero from the right hand side. So keep watching the video because that question three can get a little bit tricky. Let's start going through them. Okay, here's question one. So we're going to start off relatively simple. I'd like you just to have a look at these two parts of this question here where it says find the following limits. It says as x tends to infinity, uh, what is 2x plus 3 over x minus 4? Now, um, x uh, tending to infinity is going to be huge. Actually, like it's it, almost incomprehensible how big infinity is. So therefore, we are, are going to still end up with infinity on the numerator over infinity on the denominator. Now, the rules I said above uh, that are applicable for L'Hopital's rule are that if we have infinity over infinity, we can apply the derivative rule. Okay, so the derivative rule would be such that if we differentiate the numerator, okay, which is 2x plus 3, and we differentiate the denominator, which is x minus 4, this is what L'Hopital uh, stated, that this, uh, the limit that this would tend towards will be exactly the same as the limit is the, of the original question. So if we differentiate the numerator, we are just going to end up with 2. And if we differentiate the denominator, we'll just then end up with 1. Now, it's important to note here that we may need to differentiate more than one time. But here, in that case, we would make a 0, and we don't want that. OK, so we want to just leave it like that, so the diff derivative of this was 2 over 1, so therefore now we are just left with 2. So the answer to this question is the limit as x tends to infinity is simply 2. Let's go and have a look at part b here. So again, on the numerator, we're going to look at the highest power, and also on the denominator, we'll look at the highest power, because those things will dominate those uh, numerators and denominators. Therefore, on the numerator, we're basically going to get infinity squared over the denominator, which is also infinity squared. So in another way, we have got this scenario here. We've got infinity over infinity. We could think about square, um, canceling one of those down, but we basically, in essence, got this scenario. So that means that we are, can apply L'Hopital's rule to this. So again, the derivative of the numerator would be the derivative of x squared minus 3x plus 2 over the derivative of the denominator, and that, that would be 1 minus x squared. So in doing that, what we will do is we will use the power rule. So we're going to get 2x minus 3 over, okay, minus 2x. Now, I said earlier on the part A that we may need to differentiate again. In this case, we can. We can differentiate with respect to x again. And if we do, we are going to get 2 on the numerator 
and minus two on the denominator. Now two over minus two would equal minus one. And according to L'Hopital, that will be the limit that this expression would tend towards had we uh, used his approach. Okay, so we're on to question two. Now, each one of these uses a slightly different technique or rule, so please watch all of them. Uh, take a picture, have a go at them first, and then we'll see if you get them correct. Okay, so this time it says use L'Hopital's rule, so we have to use this rule. Um, it says uh, as x tends to zero. Now, the reason why we have to do this is because if we just substitute zero in, we would get two to the zero minus one, over zero. So that would be one minus one, which is zero over zero. So we have this scenario on the right, that as we substitute the limit on uh, limit in, sorry, we would get zero over zero. So this is exactly why we need, need to use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so L'Hopital this time uh, states that if we differentiate the numerator and uh, divide it by the derivative of the denominator, we should be able to get somewhere close to the limit. So the derivative of two to the x is two to the x times natural log two. That's part of the HL course in IB. Otherwise, you have to remember it for AP. And the derivative of minus one is just zero. So the derivative of the denominator x is just going to be one. Now, we're in a scenario where we are actually able to now substitute zero into this because there is it's not going to create an uh, undetermined point on the denominator. So therefore, anything to the power of zero is one. So we're going to have one times natural log two. Hence, the uh, limit of this question will be natural log two. So that's part A done. Let's have a look at B. So again, uh, what would happen if we did substitute infinity into this? Well, you, like another way of writing this would be x over e to the x, right? And if we substitute infinity into the numerator, that would be infinity and over e to the infinity, right? Which is also infinity. I know like it might be bigger than the other infinity, but we're talking about such vast numbers here that they're just infinite is infinite. It's, it's quite a hard thing to determine. So we are in this scenario, in the middle here, we have infinity over infinity. So what are we going to do? Well, we'll use L'Hopital's rule, and it tells us in the question we need to use that. So therefore, then, I will begin by writing it how I just did a moment ago, okay, um, without the negative exponent. And I'm going to differentiate the first part. So this is like d by dx of this part, and then we'll do d by dx of the uh, lower part. So that will just be 1 over, now the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x times by 1, because you usually times by the derivative of the power, but it stays the same. Now, if we go ahead and we look at infinity plugged into this, we will get 1 over e to the infinity. Uh, now, therefore, that, that whole expression will tend towards 0, okay? Because uh, 1 divided by an enormously large number will tend towards 0. So the answer to this question is uh, the limit is zero. Now let's have a look at the last one here. We already have a derivative set up, sorry, uh, a fraction set up. So if we go ahead and differentiate natural log um, of x, we're going to get one over x, and then we will have to differentiate the, uh, the denominator, which is one. Now this, uh, that's using L'Hopital's rule. Now let's go ahead and put infinity into this. Well, that means that the numerator will be one over infinity, and uh, over 1. So this whole expression on, at the top here will tend towards 0. 0 divided by 1 will just be 0. So the answer to this question is 0. We tend towards 0. On question 3, I've um, got a slightly different style of problem here. Um, we have x times natural log of x, so let's just determine which style or um, which type we have. Well, if we substitute 0 into this, we're going to get 0 times natural log of zero. Now, you cannot actually have natural log of zero, and I'll just quickly show you why. If we were to draw the um, graph of natural log, it actually looks like this. And so this value is one here. So uh, this is why this part's important when it says it tends to zero from the right-hand side. So as we tend towards zero from the right-hand side, we can see that the graph is basically spiking to negative infinity. Okay, so this this setup here, remember, we can actually get to zero. This It's always the position that we want to achieve or get to, but we never actually quite reach it. We will be having this type. We'll have zero times negative infinity, just for the reasons I've said here, as we move to 
zero from the right, okay, from the right, then this graph is going to spike to negative infinity. Okay, um, that's quite important really, so we can see what sort of style we've got here, which is zero times infinity or zero times minus infinity. So what do we do? Well, in order to use L'Hopital's, we want to have a quotient, we want to have a fraction. So what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to write out uh, x natural log x in a slightly different form. I'm going to move, I'm going to leave the natural log, log on the numerator, but I'm going to move the x uh, beneath. And therefore, then, as you move this x, and I want it to stay exactly the same sort of expression to the denominator, it will become a minus 1. Okay, so another way of writing that then would be natural log x over 1 over x. Okay, so um, now if we go ahead and start to use L'Hopital's, the reason why I'm doing that is that you need to get it in this sort of fractional form so that you can use L'Hopital's rule to differentiate the numerator and differentiate the denominator. So if we treat those as two slightly different expressions now, of like f of x and g of x, we're in the position that we can go and use L'Hopital's rule on it. So let's go ahead and differentiate like f of x, for example. So the derivative of f of x would be 1 over x. And the derivative of the denominator, well, the, um, this 1 over x, remember, you're doing them completely independently. So if that was x to the minus 1 and I asked you to differentiate that, you hopefully would be able to write down that that is 1, uh, sorry, negative x to the minus 2. So essentially minus 1 over x squared. So the denominator is going to become minus 1 over x squared. So it looks like if we kept on doing that, that, that number is going to get larger on the denominator here, which that would be true. But what, what we can do now is I can manipulate this slightly by times in the outer two or turning this fraction upside down and multiplying. Time, times in those outer two would leave me with minus x squared divided by the inner two multiplied together, which is just x. Uh, like I said, you could just take the denominator fraction, turn it upside down and multiply. That is exactly the same approach. And therefore, now the squared would cancel with the x and we're left with just minus x. So all of that means now we are able to go ahead and substitute this value 0 in, which was from the original part of the question. So we're tending to 0 from the right. Now, it doesn't really matter in this case whether we're tending from the right or the left, because if we substitute 0 into this, we're going to get 0. And that is the end of that question. So it's definitely a slightly uh, different approach that we did on the other questions. Good luck with your L'Hopital rules. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.